And we should be live for the Steelers Depot Monday live stream here on Monday, November 30th. As always, Dave Bryan is here with me answering any and all of your guys' Steelers questions. And I'm sure you have a whole lot of them based on what's happened in the last couple of hours. But as always, Dave Bryan is here. Dave, how you doing? I'm doing good. What day is it? What day is it? Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm exhausted from doing nothing, I think. Uh, right, right now. Uh, boy, what a, what a last hour we have had. Yeah, so just to recap with you guys the news, although I'm sure you've heard if you're in the stream by now, and then uh, we will begin to answer your questions. Again, be sure to leave them in the, in the chat. Give us a super chat if you want your question guaranteed to be answered and answered immediately. This NFL has postponed again for a third time the Steelers-Ravens game now set for Wednesday at the magical time of 3.40 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, now the uh, Steelers Washington football team game scheduled originally for Sunday, December 6th will get pushed back till Monday, December 7th at 5 p.m. Eastern time. So that is the current state of events in terms of scheduling. So got all that, Dave? Uh, I think so. Uh, most of it, at least. And it's all, I guess, subject to change, although I think these probably be the final uh changes hopefully to the schedule so a lot of questions i'm sure about what's happening and what's going to happen so we'll jump into things right now this is from two hours ago this is colin asking the question right, we're scheduled to play on wednesday will this push next game back yes it will to monday on december 7th against washington 5 p.m john pennington asked david alex if the steelers play kc do you think the secondary can stop or cover tyreek hill i say no what do you guys think um yeah you can stop him you just can't single them up all game like Tampa Bay did and expect that that's going to work for a 60-minute game. So there is a path to do it, but you just have to have all the intentionality of doing it in order to have a chance at success. Yeah, you really got to try to limit uh, the amount of uh, man-on-man stuff that you have with him. And if you do have man on, you know, if you have single high man or, or two, uh, uh, two deep man or, or along those lines, you better make sure your pass rush uh uh, gets there in a hurry and forces that ball to come out deep because if you don't uh, look, I mean, that offense is built to, to do exactly what they're doing right now. Right. Mm-hmm. And you, you add in Kelsey, you add in uh, look, it's just not t- t- Tyreek Hill either. They got some good receivers over there too. You know, Sammy Watkins and uh, uh, Har- uh, what, what's uh, McColl uh, Hardman. Yeah. Was, yeah. Hartman. And I mean, they're, they're, they're pretty stacked offensively and uh it, it it would be a tough chore for sure. You got to get the pass rush after him. Uh, that that's part of it. Absolutely. Next question here. I'll let you address this here, Dave. James Naylor says, "Wow, the game was pushed back to Wednesday to allow Baltimore time to practice." WTF? Can't wait to hear Dave and Alex talk about this. By the way, hello everyone. Hello, James. Yeah, it seems like the NFL will will say you know that part of the. Let me mute this here. Uh, partly the reason why they moved this game was the abundance of caution for the COVID stuff, but I feel like the Ravens lobbying to get this game pushed back is probably working at this point, which is frustrating to say the least. Yeah, look, they're get start- is that? Do you have the screensaver up there? Is that what it is? Do the image? Have- yeah, I'm yeah, tweeting okay. out the link to the stream, so I put up the screensaver for okay. just a moment. Oh, so okay. I'll come All back right. here in a sec. All right. I just want to make sure nothing's mm-hmm. going on on my end here. No, you're uh, good. Yeah, look, uh, they're starting to get some players back too that they would not have had had the game, mm-hmm. you know, taken, uh, uh, you know, taking place tomorrow there. So that's obviously uh, advantage for them. Uh, we'll see how many more uh, uh, leak out, you know, uh, here here in the next day or so. Because look, well, we don't know the total amount of close contacts versus players that that, that tested positive. It doesn't sound like a guy like Lamar Jackson is going to be back. You know, right, right now. But uh, you know, look, obviously, getting uh, Ingram and Dotson back's a pretty, pretty, uh, pretty big start. You know, uh, 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 for them, really changes the complexion of the game. So, yeah, it's unfortunate. Look, I mean, they uh, they only supposedly had what one positive test today, and it's a guy that that they don't deem to mm-hmm. to, to to really impact. I uh, yeah. Yeah, right. I are guys. So, you know, uh, is there truth to the rumor that the uh, or, or that, you know, there's a report floating around that there was an attempted kind of wildcat strike, if you will. I had to even Google what that meant. You know, uh, basically, it's a union employee, you know, uh, or union uh, uh, members going to, you know, uh, going on strike without unions approval. Mm-hmm. And that sounds like uh, what what that they were threatening to do because not having full practices and all like that. Uh, 
it's a mess, and you just had the poor Denver team had to right. uh, had to play with uh, no quarterback either. So, I mean, does this thing look slanted? <laughs> yeah, absolutely, mm-hmm. it does. Does this look kind of manipulated on the part of uh, uh, Harbaugh and the Ravens? Absolutely, it does. But yeah, you know, I, I keep circling back to 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 the thing too. Here we are, and you know, what is fair in a COVID COVID world right now? You know. Uh, it's sure. just, it's unfortunate for the Steelers, obviously. Yeah, and again, I think anyone that would have the right to be mad is Denver in their situation, considering what they happened had happened at, at quarterback with Kendall Hinton yesterday. Um, but as we said all along, NFL does not care about fairness; they care about completeness, and that is clearly evident based on their actions uh, this week. David O, David and Alex, uh, what 2020 accommodations for COVID uh, do you like and believe the NFL will keep? He references the 16-man practice squads, three-game IR rule, protected practice squad players i think they'll keep a lot of that maybe not everything probably not a special reserve list for illnesses although depending on the status of covid next fall we'll see um but i think they will keep a lot of the rules that have been implemented uh, over this past year yeah i mean i don't think uh look i mean we we, we don't even have the vaccine yet right right mm, so we could be dealing know. with this next football season like there's a strong right. possibility of that right i i don't see this changing obviously you hope you don't have what's happening now you would hope by by then a good selection of, of the players, if they deemed it something that they wanted to do to get whatever vaccines out there. I mean, that's, that's way above our pay grade, obviously mm-hmm. uh, here, but uh, to, you know, long story short, when it comes to David O's question, yeah, I, I think this is going to be here. I don't know, I, at least through the 2021 season, it, it might, you know, what kind of world do we live in? You know, is it a pandemic world? What's what's next after COVID? You know, mm-hmm. uh, is it, you know, it, it might be just something that stays in there for a while. Mike Adesso, crazy times, guys, crazy times. You got that right, Mike. If Danny Smith is healthy, would they have him communicate with Blaine Stewart from a remote location throughout the game? Maybe Canada too. I don't know. My expectation is that that will not be the case. Obviously, he could help communication with, with preparation for the game, but the game itself, I doubt Smith is communicating with the team. So I think Stewart's going to be flying solo in that regard. Obviously, Mike Tomlin, other assistants could help him with that, but I don't think there'll be any communication from that standpoint with Danny Smith or Matt Canada, both reportedly tested positive for COVID-19. Uh, Mark Leslie, hi, Dave and Alex. Happy Victory Monday. <laughs> Probably had to catch himself. My question is, what the heck is going on? Any tips to watching the Steelers when I'm at work on Wednesday? I don't have a great answer for you on that one, Mark, unfortunately. Uh, James asking about what time the game is on Wednesday. As Mutated Genome said, 3.40 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, let me scroll down through here. Mutated Genome says, have you guys watched any tape on Smallwood? What are his strengths and weaknesses? Dave, you watched more on Smallwood when they initially signed him than I did. So give us a rundown on what to expect with him. Could he be the extra player elevated, I suppose, as well? Yeah, look, and we still don't know. The team asked for and received a uh, a roster exemption on Kevin Dotson. I think I'm the only one that's reporting that right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, and technically, I think this team has a, what did we decide? A 51 or, a, yeah, it'd be technically, I guess, a 51-man roster right now. Or or if you want to consider him on roster, you can go the other way plus one mm-hmm. uh, j- j- just with the exemption there. But uh, uh there's there's I, there's more transactions coming, you know, right. uh, the, the question is, is who now when it comes to Smallwood, look, him, he's kind of a kind of scat back like, I guess, if you 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 would say I mean, he, he obviously caught of, uh, you know, he doesn't have a large selection of, uh, of explosive plays underneath his belt. Although there, you know, there were a few of them, I think, that come uh, via the pass. He can catch the ball out of the backfield. He obviously can run. Uh to me, I from from what I remember on the film study, he he hits it fast. You know, he doesn't dilly dally from from the time he gets the ball. Uh, obviously, doesn't have a, a elite uh, elite speed to the edge. As far as pass pro goes, it looked acceptable to me. Now, if you go back to the some of the reports uh, from from training camp, uh, there were some uh, you know some some reports that he struggled in some of the drills there. I obviously was not priv- priv- privy to see those, mm. but uh, I, I I view him as a, a a fairly well-rounded back. Heck, I'll be honest with you, I view him as a better back than than Jalen Samuels is now. You know, Measure that however you want to. Uh, he's also a lot more experienced than a guy than, than than Anthony McFarlane right now. So, you know, he might very well be your your second best dressed running back that you have on the roster. Uh, 
uh, when's the game? Wednesday, Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Wednesday there. So we'll we'll see. Yeah, and from a receiving, protecting standpoint, he may be your best back. At least maybe as a receiver, probably the best. Maybe second best behind Benny Snell. So I think he'll get elevated. Uh, at least there's a strong chance of that. And we'll see on Kevin Dotson. But they, if you include Dotson, they're at 52 right now. So at least one move is coming if Dotson does not end up getting his exemption reversed and, and, and dressing or playing, then they'll have at least two spots to make, so uh, to, to fill. So we'll see where they go in the next 36 hours. Steeler fan 1933 says, I really hope the Steelers severely punish the Ratbirds on the field on Wednesday. No mercy. Hoping so as well. Uh, look, Steel- uh, we we uh, talked on a podcast today. It'd be nice to have a 50 burger, but uh, yeah. look, you just, you play to win the game, as Herm <laughs> Edwards would say. So, Look, I mean, are you more than anything, you're probably worried about the team's psyche at this point. You know, how, how are they going to be able to handle this? You know, because this right. is quite, like it or not, this is a distraction. And this is mm-hmm. a distraction on top of a distraction on top of a distraction. Uh, you probably have several of them kind of questioning, is it us against the league? And why wouldn't you at, at, at this point? So, uh I understand all the outrage that's out. I mean, I'm sitting here looking at them on Twitter all day long, but uh you just got to deal with what you can control and, and and move on, and we'll we'll see. Distraction, you could say, something like that. Steel Pastor, this Wednesday nonsense is really bugging me. Any any idea who on the Ravens will be miraculously able to play on Wednesday? It sounds like they will get back at least running backs J.K. Dobbin, Dobbins and Mark Ingram, two of the first players to went on COVID last Monday. Who else will come back? We're not sure. Could there be others? Certainly. I just don't know the timetable too well for Baltimore right now. Yeah, well, I'll pull that. Up. I'll pull the timetable up while while okay. you take some questions here, and we'll talk quickly about that. Ken's asking about playoff seating. He can't get an answer to, but I don't see your question yet, Ken. If you ask it later, then I can address it then. Charlie asking if the Steelers uh, will be able to handle the Chiefs if they meet up in the playoffs. Sure, they can. I mean, the Chiefs will be by far the toughest opponent, obviously. But can they beat them? Sure. Would I pick the Steelers to win that game? Mm, maybe, maybe not. Probably not at this point. But we'll uh, cross that bridge if and when we come to it. You got to get there first. Yeah. You know, both both teams got to get there first. And I know it's easy to do right now because the, these are uh, easily, uh, easily, I think, on paper and on tape, uh, the two best teams right now. But what all is going to happen in the next five weeks? I mean, yeah. injury wise, COVID wise. I mean, I understand why people want to look, look, look that far ahead, but uh, don't forget they got a game Wednesday and then they got another game the following uh, Monday and then a kind of a short week against Buffalo there. So, mm-hmm. uh, so much can change, right? I mean, I, like I said, I understand the, 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 the want to kind of look ahead like that. And look, I made sure I did not miss that game against Tampa uh, uh, on Sunday because I wanted a, a, another look against what's you know, regarded as a fairly good defense in the Buccaneers, uh, just to have that in my scouting memory. But we'll, we'll see. Right now, it, it, it's, it would be hard to, I think, pick the Steelers in that game, uh, regardless of where the game's played at, too, because there is no home field advantage, really, True. technically. You know, no no crowd or, or anything like that until somebody shows that they can, and, you know, other than the Raiders show that they can knock off the Chiefs. I, I would think that you have to consider the uh, uh, the Chiefs a favorite of some kind. All right, here's, here, here's your timeline for you, Alex. Uh, okay. Brandon Williams, it looks like, went on COVID on the 23rd. Now, the uh, being as there, there's no talk about him coming back, uh, I, I, I'm going to assume, assume, and that's dangerous, that he's going to miss the game still, that maybe he tested positive. There's already the report of Mark Ingram and J.K. Dobbins evidently going to be ready. They they were on the 23rd, so obviously as cl- close contact guys, they're back. Uh, the next set would be... It looks like Pernell McPhee on the 24th. And you would think there's not enough time for him, right. nor is there enough time for the guys on the 25th, which would have been Calais Campbell, Patrick McCarry, Matt, and, and, and Matt Skura, assuming those guys were close contact guys, I would think. And once again, that's, that's, that's dangerous because if they went on on the 25th and we're talking about how many more, I don't know, maybe there is a chance right. those guys get, get, get cleared. I mean, what's, what, what, how, what's the amount of days? Five, five days? 
it could be as, as little as five for most of these guys. It's around 10, but as I think Matthew Marksy has pointed out, close contact starts not when you get put on the list, but you're just time of your last close contact. Now, I'm sure there isn't a big difference there because they were just coming off of the game, but if there's even a day of difference there where someone went on the 24th, but their last contact was 23rd, then they could theoretically play by Wednesday's game. That's the case with Dobbins and Ingram and potentially Brandon Williams. So we'll see. They could, they could get those guys back and maybe one or two more. And, and, and as Alex and I talked, I uh, had a really good discussion the other day on, on, on the podcast about, you know, where, where's the NFL transparency here? I, mm-hmm. I Boy, how, how great does that podcast episode look about yeah, right now? Especially with know? everything that just happened, yeah. Right, you know, because we don't have – we have dates here because media people put them out and all like that, but we don't have exact dates of when these guys tested, when these guys were considered close contact, and yada, yada. So that leaves a lot of gray area where you're – where it's real dangerous for for us to say, okay, they're not going to have that guy or they're not going to have that guy. So we can guess, but uh, I I mean, if you're happy with guesses, there you go. Exactly. Uh, Still Pastor says, thank you, Steelers Depot, for your patience and flexibility. Thank you guys for being here. Again, ask your questions in the chat for Dave and I to answer. We're here here till 8 p.m. Brenton717 says, DNA, thanks for the great content. What, if any, are your predictions for the penalties the Ravens might receive for causing this mess? I imagine, as Dave said, it'll be similar to what happened in Tennessee, probably even greater, um, where they're going to be fined heavily. I would expect a loss of at least one draft pick. How high that pick would be, I'm not quite sure, but um, I think it will be a relatively severe punishment. If you consider yeah, that I, at least, yeah, I, I, I would too. I, I would think so. David O asking if the Steelers will be able to stop the Ravens' running game. We'll see. Obviously, the Ravens' offensive line is still going to be uh, undermanned in this one, especially along the interior, and so they'll have to do a better job in the trenches. Of course, Pittsburgh will unlikely to have Stephon to it in this game either, so that will hurt them. But that will be the main goal: is to shut down that Ravens' rushing attack. I would not mesh charge RG three. I would play a little bit more conventional style RG three. Obviously, not the threat that the Lamar raised in the mesh charge just really has not produced the results overall. It stopped Lamar, it stopped the quarterback, but it's not stopped the Ravens' run game, which is your overall goal. So I would do something different this time around. Oh, uh, let's see here. Uh, Sean, American Patriots, says, as Tomlin said about having to play 13 straight games, we don't care. We will play whenever and wherever. That that uh, message and mantra has certainly been tested uh, this week. Uh, the one LC7, do you think we could get to it or Connor back? Connor, no, because the report is he tested positive to it. We don't know for sure if he tested positive. My assumption, and again, these are speculatory and you know i don't take with a grain of salt my assumption is that he did test positive and so he would not be able to play if that's the case if he was just close contact there is a chance he could return although i think those odds are pretty pretty low though bugs came off so i guess they they do exist um, yeah we'll see look we don't know about hawkins or you know mm-hmm. if indeed he tested positive i mean obviously there's a report out there on james connor testing positive uh, there is heavy speculation that to it did as well. I still don't think well, the team obviously hasn't confirmed any of that. Right. Uh, and, and I don't think they will. Uh, but uh, so, you know, there you go. I mean, look, it's going to be interesting to see how many of these guys just watching. Look, we will know for sure because the daily injury, the daily transaction sheet lets you know who, which guys come off and, 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 and whatnot. And, you know, the, the Ravens obviously had what four come off today. Right. Mm-hmm. But also put four back on at the same right. time. Put, but, yeah. put, put four on. Right. Sean American Patriot also says the game is at three forty five because NBC wanted to show the lighting of the Rockefeller Christmas tree at night and not football. Yeah. You can't make this stuff up. Uh, Mike Adesso asks, also asking about to it. We'll see. Not particularly optimistic. Vega Sloth says, if all the ant eaters die, who has to eat the ants? I assume Pittsburgh. The NFL will make the Steelers eat all the ants. I don't know how that question got thrown in there. Um, Doma, I don't even want to say that. But the question is, should we pretend to be surprised when the game is postponed once again to make a Week 18 game? You would hope not. I mean, obviously, the virus seems to be under control in Baltimore right now. And they have their practice time that they... And we'll beg the NFL for. Um, so I would assume this is the last postponement, but who the heck knows? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> uh, and it's fair. Uh, look, you know, back when I was in sales, you know, they, they used to always tell us, ain't nothing sold until it's paid for. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, ain't, ain't, ain't no game played until it's played, you know, yeah. especially in this. I'm tired of guessing at it now. You know, I, I'm not even going to take a shot at it anymore because uh, here here we are. 
Uh, Stu Pasher says, is the start time confirmed? Yes, the NFL has confirmed the start times. That is – Yeah, we got the release on that. What yeah. is that? 3.40. I'm getting it tight. Yeah, 3.40 Wednesday against Baltimore and 5, 5 p.m. against Washington on December 7th, correct? I'm, I'm getting myself mixed up at this point. Yeah, I've got the uh, – right here in my email box here direct okay. from the league. Uh 3.40 on NBC on Wednesday, December the 2nd is Ravens and Steelers now. And uh, week 13, Monday, December 7th, Washington at Pittsburgh. Kickoff time, 5 o'clock. So, what channel uh, is that? East, East that East? is to be determined. Okay, so we do not know the channel for that yet. We right. know what it was supposed ES- to be on? Well, I know ESPN has, uh, ESPN has the Bills and 49ers. Okay. At eight fifteen. I mean, was it supposed to be on Fox initially, or CBS? that was a Fox game okay. originally? Would, I would imagine Fox would get to keep it, not lose the the game entirely. But we'll right. See. But uh, the release says to be determined. Okay. Andres, uh, hey guys, do we have a quality control guy or pass run game coordinator, and what exactly are those positions? Uh, good questions. In terms of the, the pass run game, I mean, basically the Steelers offensive line coach is kind of function like a run game coordinator. So Mike Munchak previously, and now Sean Surrett or Randy is a big component of the of the passing game. They all work together, obviously. In terms of quality control, no one has that title anymore for Pittsburgh, but you do have some assistant coaches that have worked their way up the ladder. Guys like Blaine Stewart and Denzel Martin. Some of those have come over from the scouting side. Matt Sims as well, and their job can be you know, different week to week and team to team, but they're just kind of helping out wherever they're needed, occasionally doing different special projects, some pre-advanced scouting for, you know, opponents two, three games ahead of time and stuff like that. So it's hard to give you a specific answer because it does vary. It's a pretty vague term, but uh, there you go. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to find some other questions here. Um Jeremy Coakley, with these games being so close together, do you expect to see more rotation on the D-line? How many snaps do you think Bugs gets? How will they handle running back rotation? Who's a better pass blocker? All good questions. I think you will see more rotation there for sure between Wormley and Mondo and Bugs. Maybe a little bit of Carlos Davis. Handle the running back rotation. Um, you know, Tomlin said Snell's the featured runner. We'll see how truthful that is. I think obviously you'll see McFarland play more. I would potentially use a guy like Smallwood in some more passing situations if he gets elevated. And as Dave, as you pointed out, maybe even just run some of that 0-1 personnel where you just don't have a running back on the field. Right. And look, I don't think we can 100% guarantee that Bugs will be active. You know, sure. uh, it's going to be interesting to see how these act- look. They 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 brought up uh, activated Brooks today. So mm-hmm. that's one guy you got to figure is going to be dressed, right? Uh, uh, you obviously got uh, – you would think that Dotson's on course right now to to dress at the very least. Uh, his exemption will probably go away here in another 24 hours, and then he'll officially be on the 53. So that's Dotson you'll have, uh, ha- ha- have in uniform. Uh, Brooks, you would think, is going to dress now. Uh, who else? Uh, if you bring up Smallwood, you're probably going to address him. Mm-hmm. So you already had five line, five defensive linemen, and normally in a normal situation, they only dress five, right? So right. Uh, there's there's an outside chance that Bugs does not dress for this game still. Yeah, we'll just have to see exactly what the lay of the land is because as we said earlier, the roster moves are not done yet. So until they are, it's hard to really, you know, peg down exactly who's going to dress and who's not going to dress. And even then there'll be certainly some uncertainty um, to it. I was all prepared to write up my uh, inactive guesses tonight. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Big pause on those have also been right. postponed for sure. Right. Um, Keaton Prince saying, talking about the Steelers app, uh, DJ two bugs wasn't even getting snaps when healthy. True. But with two it down, then that may open the door again. Charlie Doyle. What will the Steelers do about Ben's huge cap hit next year? Which I think is 41 million. You are fully expecting an extension. Correct. Dave. For, for ben. Oh yeah. I wrote a yeah. big old article about that. If he wants to re, uh, 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 research, I'll see if I can find it real quick and, and you can put it, at, pull, pull it up there. Okay. Uh, play dead zero one one two has a super chat for 99 cents. Thank you so much. Message was retracted. So again, if you want a super chat, it'll guarantee that we uh, address your question because we have a ton of people here. One twenty eight. So thank you guys for being here with Dave and I We're here for another half hour or so. Uh, but if you want to uh, have a super chat, that is the best way to, to have your question be answered immediately and uh, guaranteed for it to be answered in the first place. Uh, be sure to like the stream. If you do not want a super chat, just helps get more people here in the chat chat 
All right, let me scroll back up. Oh, go ahead. I I just sent you a link to that. Uh, right, well, what's the title of? I'll just search it on here instead of doing the whole Twitter thing. What's the uh, uh, title? The title of it is "Looking Ahead at Two. Just uh, type in "Looking Ahead at 2021." Okay, and this is about Ben and his right. extension, and yeah, certainly one that's a, a worthwhile uh, read about Ben's future with the team. But he will not be cut, to like unlike some uh, ESPN analysts might speculate. Right. All right, so I'll have this kind of scroll through it here as we answer some more questions. Uh, Hugh Z says, only benefit to the Wednesday game is that it is now 9 a.m. Australian time. Let's go Steelers. Hey, there's a silver lining. I can appreciate that optimism. Uh, ben S. says, we might be able to build a good chip on shoulder narrative, though, even undefeated. So that's a silver lining, I suppose. Another one. Any little bit of motiv- motivation certainly helps. Uh Page 440, do you feel it fair of the league to postpone the game to Wednesday and get players back that the Ravens wouldn't have otherwise had Tuesday night? No. Short answer, I do not believe that is fair, and I'm sure the Denver Broncos fans and and team agrees. Uh, Is the NFL against the idea of the 18th week? This is from Eric McDay. Uh, Certainly, they will avoid it any way possible, and that is clearly evident based on what's happened this week. (laughs) They're Um, not going to burn any money. They're mm -hmm. not – this thing, they'll keep moving it back uh, uh, as part of week 12. Uh, how, you know, I, I, am I surprised it's gone to Wednesday now? Absolutely. Am, but yeah. uh, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll mani- they're going to do everything in their power to, to not get into that week 18 thing. Mm-hmm. It is a last, last resort. Josh Wolf was to it positive test or close contact? We don't know for sure. The belief is that he was a positive test. But again, we do not know with any confirmation. And the, t- the team's not going to confirm that. And, right. and on the daily report, you know, that, that the NFL puts out, it just says whether or not the player was placed on a reserve COVID list. It does not say test positive or anything along those lines. So, you know, do we think that's the case? Yes, obviously. And then, uh, you know, there's obviously uh, outside media reports on like James Conner and, and, and uh, what Danny Smith and all mm-hmm. like that. But uh, the, the team is probably not going to, confirm or deny that exactly tyrone smith the, with the super chat thank you so much tyrone what are the chances the steelers are penalized for their mini outbreak none i think the steelers actually did a great job of handling this thing ensuring it did not become a baltimore or tennessee like situation where it became this massive spread within the locker room it was contained players will get sick players will test positive that is just the nature of life right now but pittsburgh seemed to do a great job of containing this thing because at most what two players tested positive maybe you know three i guess at most this week um with, with two at hawkins and connor so i think pittsburgh did a great job of following protocol and, and keeping guys safe at least that we know until the next test come in i mean it's, it, it's i mean it's a daily thing right now but mm-hmm. no i i wouldn't think uh, at least right now there doesn't look to be any negligence on on a pro you know as far as protocol goes with the steelers right now right and that seems to be the, the trend and, and most important so good job there for pittsburgh uh, Sean also says the best Steelers podcast on YouTube. Thanks, Alex and Dave. I will have invested over two hours listening to you guys today. Thank you, Sean, for the podcast, I assume, and for our live stream. Let me scroll back up here to where the questions were at from earlier. Um, let me scroll down here. A lot of people obviously upset about what's transpired, and I don't blame you guys one bit. Mike Spencer, what are the largest fines the Ravens can face here? There are limits. I think it's maybe like a million dollars for the organization, but I don't know for sure um, what those are off the top of my head and also if that changes at all given the COVID landscape of things. Um, I'm trying to scroll back up because every time I get a new chat, it kind of scrolls my, my thing back down. Uh, da, 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 da. After Dave's percentage of this game happening on Thanksgiving, I'm taking all of Alex's picks going forward. Oh, that's a bad decision, Mark, because I'm as wrong as anybody. I think Dave's doing better with the picks this year. So uh, there you go. Double HH, their best backs running behind, mediocre blocking, and no Lamar. She was losing two. It hurts a bit, but I still like us in the trenches. I do as well, but obviously the first matchup, uh, Pittsburgh lost that trench battle overall on both sides of the football, so that does have to change this time. What's uh, weather supposed to be like on Wednesday now? That's it's a supposed good question. to snow on Tuesday. Right. Let's see what my weather app says. 40 degrees, partly cloudy. So snow should be out by Wednesday. It'll be chilly, obviously. Going to be about uh, 38 degrees at 5. So it'll be chilly, but clear, but mostly clear skies and uh, some wind, though, but, but no snow. So that's good. Mm-hmm. Um, let me scroll back through the comments. Thank you guys so much. So 146 here in the chat. Really appreciate it. 
Um, Rob Coe, so why did the Steelers go back to covering receivers with linebackers? Didn't we already go through this with LJ Fort on Keenan Allen? Yeah, that was frustrating. I didn't know there were some injuries there, but um, you know, I hope those adjustments get made. Uh, Micah does so. Hey, guys, with all the changes happening, will these affect your podcast schedule next week or so? I don't think so, right, Dave? No changes? I mean, we're, 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 we'll have a show Wednesday, but normally that Wednesday show is looking ahead at a beat writer, mm-hmm. you know, for – so uh, obviously we'll you – know, I, I think what will end up happening – is, I don't know, we'll have a Washington beat writer either on the Friday show or the Monday show. And then, you know, all this is, you know, pending what happens here in the next couple of days, assuming this game goes off okay and all. But uh, uh, we'll still have Monday, Wednesday, and Friday will still be the schedule. I don't see any reason to change that right, right now. Right. David Kapoor says, wait, Wednesday now? Yep, game is now Wednesday, David. J Dub, would you rather see McFarland or Snell take most of the snaps? I would rather see a rotation, um, but I'm excited to see more of McFarland, and I want to let him kind of get an opportunity, but also Snell, because as you said earlier, Dave, he's kind of a warm up, warm up the tires kind of running back, and so this is a good opportunity for him. Yeah, that's one plus in this is that you know uh, if they if they use him the way I think they're going to use him is you know you you would obviously hope that he gets a twenty something. You know, at least 20 something carries in the game. And, and as we've seen so far, which has obviously been limited, he's kind of back that seems to warm up, you know, eight, eight, ninth, tenth carry along in those lines. Now, obviously, the big concern with, 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 with Benny Snell dating back into, into early this season is him holding on to the football, right? Mm-hmm. You know, so, uh, you know, that's got to be, uh, that's got to be priority number one there. So, uh, I, you know, we're, we're going to, I think this is a, don't, uh, Make no mistake about it, this is a huge opportunity for Benny Snell. And and regardless of who's on the field for the Ravens defensive line wise and and, and, and all like that, he really needs a strong showing here uh in, in this game, regardless of who plays, because let's face it, you know, uh when you look at the, the you know what James Conner and his situation past past this season and you know, you look at that running back room as a whole with, with Jalen Samuels and and all, you know. He he needs to he needs to stake a claim that he can maybe be a feature back and obviously he got a vote of confidence from Mike Tomlin the other day during the podcast so uh, this is a big game for Benny Snell and I'm excited mm-hmm. to see what happens for him and and you know yeah I do think you get McFarlane and Smallwood if he's elevated uh, some touches in this as well too but I would expect most of them to go to Benny Snell. Yeah, I think that's fair, and certainly want to see, see Snell continue to excel in short yarded situations. That's kind of been his role this year, you know, third and short, goal line type stuff. Three of his rushing touchdowns this year have all come from one yard out, so um, you know, that's an area where this team has struggled, and hopefully Snell can can improve upon that uh, against Baltimore. A couple of super chats here, a lot of them actually. Thank you guys so much. Let's go through them. The one LC seven says, Dave, do we have to wait until we win the Super Bowl to get your get, to get a face for the voice? You are a funny guy. Keep up the good work. <laughs> I look like. Like a catcher's mitt with eyes. Oh, no, Dave, you always say that. I know. I, I got. True. I got a younger pitcher float. A couple of younger pitchers, I think, floating around. Several younger pitchers floating around out there. I just, you know, we'll see. <laughs> let's let's win that Super Bowl first, and and and, yeah. and have that good problem to have. Brian says, just dropping by. Keep up the content. Peace. Thank you so much, Brian. Really appreciate the super chat. Very kind of you. And Pierre Devate says, Pierre Miller loved the hilarious tweets after the snooze broke. Dave and Alex Raven Scott Goodell in their back pocket is the optics. It does not look good for the NFL. It definitely feels like a double standard hypocrisy and some inconsistency, clearly, for the NFL based on their decision making. Just win the game. That's yeah. the best that's the best uh, best response, period. Win the game. Ken Cranston had a question about playoff seeding. We'll try to answer it. I'm not an expert on the topic, though. If the playoffs go to 16 teams because of an eight, eight week 18 game, can a team with a losing record potentially knock out an actual seeded team because of a makeup game? How does this work? Can a team with a losing record potentially knock out an actual seeded team because of a makeup game? How does this work? I mean, I guess. I don't know exactly. Yeah, I would think I would think it would go through win percentages first, right? You know, it's yeah, just plain old winning winning percentages. I don't. I'm not sure I fully understand the question uh, there, but I mean, it's going to go by win percentages first, you know, right? Uh, and I, I you know, I, I kind of. I mean, look, they're they're going to play all these games one way or the other. Mm-hmm. There, every team's going to play 16 games. Period. Yeah. Uh, how, you know how they do it is, is yet to be seen. I mean, I'll be surprised if they don't. Obviously, I mean, I'm not, nothing's guaranteed. Obviously, uh, right right now, as we've seen, but uh, uh, I can't envision a, a, a team that had a game, quote unquote, canceled. 
uh, you know, that cancellation and them not having a chance to win the game being a reason why they wouldn't make the playoffs, right? Right, right. Yeah, I mean, they would all play 16 games ultimately, even if it is a Week 18 situation. Obviously, if you have an NFC East kind of type thing where, you know, a team with a losing record is winning the East and then that, you know, some wildcard team doesn't make it because, you know, they were 10-6 and six and lose to a 7-9 and nine. NFC East team, that kind of situation is a, is a standard thing, but um, not anything in particular with an 18 game schedule, if, if all that makes sense. Um, Pierre Devate says, after the fungibility of the schedule and COVID minutia, Dave says you play to win the game. Yeah, a lot absolutely. Of, I'm, I'm a quote machine, right? I mean, a I, 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 I'm a, uh, uh, a cliche m- m- machine when it comes to that. Boy, what did you think about uh, evidently? Uh, who is it uh, with the athletic now? It used to be with CBS. Does the mocks? Uh, we no. are drawing a blank on him. I don't uh, know CBS to the athletic. Yeah, what, what you was do. The con- I mean, I'm sure I do, but the guy that that, that releases the, uh, the 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 draft uh, rankings every year. Oh, Not, I'm drawing a blank on. Yeah. Him. Anyway, he has uh, he has the Steelers uh, mocking uh, the uh, the the running back to Clemson in the first mm. round uh, out out of Clemson in the first yeah. round. Don't think that's gonna happen, but. Uh... That's your November mock for you. I mean, that was a super chat from Pierre, by the way. So thank you again. Really appreciate the couple of super chats that you've sent Dave and I. All right, back to some more questions here. Just scrolling back up as I'm getting pretty good at here. Shweta Cole says, will they even be able to get COVID test results back by 3.40 p.m. on Wednesday? I thought the earliest time they got results back was 4 p.m. That's a good point. I mean, they'll test Wednesday, but just like the Sunday games, you know, traditionally, they don't get those results back until a Sunday night or Monday morning. So they'll get, um, what, tomorrow's batch of tests, you know, Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. But the Wednesday's test, they probably will not get results of until after the Steelers-Ravens game. Well, once again, it goes back to what we said about the whole transparency thing. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, we're, we're guessing here. We, we we think that, you know, is what you just stated is, <clears throat> is the correct instance there. Uh but it'd be nice to have some easy report to follow along, follow along with, to knowing when this stuff is happening, instead right. well, of just rely, you know, relying on a lot of this stuff being passed on to the media. I mean, yeah, I agree. I, I say that because with Vance, whenever he tested positive, you know, he played in that game, the first game against Baltimore, I believe it was, um, or whatever game it was, and they didn't get the results back until the next day or that night. And so that's how I assume things were kind of working, and that's how I assume they still are working, basically twenty four hours to get your test results back. Dane Brugler, I should have known that. I've been buying okay. Dane, Dane Dane's follow, reading Dane's stuff for years there. Is uh, he the athletic has, now? I didn't even know uh, that. Yeah, he's been okay. with the athletic for uh, at least, I think, two years now. Okay. Uh, Travis Ntn, he has mocked to the Steelers at number 32. You can have, somebody going to have to come, mm-hmm. come uh, peel me out off the rope <laughs> here <laughs> if that happens. Uh, look, how many running backs around the league that were starters at the beginning of the year have missed – at least like two games this year, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of them. For I sure, mean, it yeah. just goes to show you, look what the kid in Jacksonville's doing. And, mm-hmm. uh, look, I mean, the, the Nick Chubbs are out there. The, uh, uh, the Derek Henry's are out there, but, uh, good luck if you don't get one of those. Yeah, for sure. Uh, with all the other needs this team's going to have come draft time, running back is not going to be, it's going to be on their list potentially, but not that high on their list for sure. Uh, RJ Brooks says Steelers are the most underrated team. Uh, Michael Jackson. Yeah, I, would, I wouldn't say they're underrated. I mean, I mean, I, I don't think they're underrated right now. Yeah, I wouldn't call them that. Although Michael Jackson, Jackson also asked, why isn't the media more bullish on this ten and zero squad? I think because I think most people think Kansas City is still the team to beat, and that's the framing of the whole conversation, right or wrong. Yeah, but you'll be hard pressed to find a ranking with the Steelers not at number two. So, right, but I guess most people would say we'll put the undefeated team at number one as the, mm. the counter argument. At least. Um, let's see here. Mark Miller, can you imagine John Facenda and NFL Films with sound describing the 2020 season? Man, we need some guys like Facenda today. Just don't have the, the Steve Sables and all those guys of the world. The autumn wind is a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that, was, that was a good time to grow up back then yeah. with uh, with the NFL films and, and stuff like that. Stuff that uh, as a young kid, just uh, to hear the, to hear the uh, to, to, to see the visuals and, and, and the sound, that kind of sound, that, that, that grandiose kind of sound to it really would cap, you know, captivate you as a mm-hmm. young boy, you know? Uh, and, uh, yeah, John Facenda had a heck of a voice doing those. Rosa says Pittsburgh is bad. That's all the comment that is. All right. Thank you, Rosa, for that 
comment. Uh, Mark Leslie, does the extra rest days for some of the players injured make up for the distraction of this game keep getting pushed back? No, I mean, it is good to have that rest for Juju and Hayden, but I would have rather played the game on Tuesday or Sunday as opposed to letting those guys rest up for another day or two. Just a yes. mess this week. Yeah, sort of mini, not really bye week, if you will, kind of sort of no. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, within that, I, I, I'm just more, I would be more concerned with just uh, uh, the uh, the creature of habit in, in a lot of these guys, right? Right. You know, that's a uh, big thing. Uh, the mentality, look, you know, you, you, you gear up to do this on a certain day before, before a game. And then you get in your mind, okay, the game's moved. I got to adjust my, my schedule. Like I, I normally it can have a dessert on this, you know, just the little mm-hmm. things that we don't see some of the mentalities. I, I think, uh, uh, that's one of, that would be my biggest fear, obviously not knowing what goes on behind closed doors with a lot of these guys. Right. Creatures of habit. You know, athletes are, football players are, professionals are. When that gets disrupted to this degree, it really does mess with you. And even Eric Ebron was half joking, I think, on Twitter over the weekend about can he have this adult beverage? I think he was tweeting about and, you know, just knowing, you know, based on the schedule, uh, just how you want to kind of live your life and prepare for this game on and off the field. Uh, Russ Obenstein, what's up, guys? Just got home from knee replacement. Are we ready to whip the Ravens? Russ, hope you're feeling better. Uh, and hopefully if they can get you a win, Russ, as you are on the mend. Uh, Randy Nestor, does anyone know when Stefan Tuitt can be activated? Is he positive or just close contact? We don't know. The belief is he did test positive, but we do not know that. So if he is positive, he will not be able to get activated for a little while longer. If he's close contact, there could be a chance he would play against Baltimore, but I think that those odds are still pretty low. Uh, Paul Scherf, imagine what happens if there is an outbreak during the playoffs. This whole thing is FUBAR. Yeah, it's all messed up, Paul, and that is certainly a, a pretty bad scenario for the NFL. I think at the very least, when you get the postseason started, you go into bubble mode to, to whatever degree that is. You know, we'll see, but you got to probably change the approach for the playoffs. That's my interpretation. Arturo says, is there any chance to a plays Wednesday if he's close contact? Then he could, but probably not. Don't expect it, Arturo. Uh, lucky one, seven, two, nine chances of us going 16 and Oh, I'm just focused on Baltimore whenever this game gets played, but, uh, there's a chance, obviously. I mean, there, there is a chance. There's a chance until they get beat. But, uh, I mean, look, I, I think the odds are against them. I mean, history says it is, right. you know, but I mean, this is a good team. This is, this is, this is obviously the tough, you know, that you get through all, you get through this game with, with Baltimore. All right. And let's say, you know, look, I, I think the early line, we'll see how, how it changes was 10 points being favored over Washington, which, you know, po- that, that, that's, that's just the, the, the bookies and the handicappers, what they think of the, uh, of the game there, you get past that, then you get a tough Buffalo team and then, 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 I mean, you're getting in, into a little bit tougher games there coming off of a stretch where uh, it's kind of taxing to get through. So uh, I, I put out on Twitter earlier today, boy, if this team goes undefeated at this point, I think Mike Tomlin gets coach of the year for 2020, 2021, and 2022. <laughs> you know, obviously joking, but uh, uh, the magnitude of, of having to navigate all that this team has got, had to navigate through this, this season, just enormous, right? Mm-hmm. You know, so... Uh, Look, they're a good team, and if they stay healthy, they're going to definitely have a chance at running the table here. Yeah, well said. The last style bender, should they double-team Chase Young next week or let Bill Nueva go one-on-one? Um, I, I don't well, know. You obviously can't double-team every every down. You know, right, so. and, and and Washington has some good pass rushers. Monty, actually, I think Young is like fourth on the team in sacks. I mean, you have – and he's been more productive than the sack numbers alone show, but they got Montez Sweat and veteran Ryan Kerrigan, Tim Settle, and Chase Young. So they got a lot of pass rushers to worry about, and it's hard to double-team – Someone on the left side, because usually your tight end is on the right side. So there's a challenge uh, there as well. Uh, Jonathan Mason, hey guys, can y'all give a quick reminder of your background and then how you ended up doing Steelers Depot? Dave, want to give a short uh, fun fact? Oh there? Lord, I've, I've done it all. I mean, what what haven't I done? You know, uh, okay. been in been in sales. I mean, been uh, uh, spent some time in some restaurants early on in in, in life. Sales. Uh, uh, done, you know, a lot of real estate stuff for myself, uh, for, for a while, uh, obviously not college educated and, uh, was able to break free of the free world by, by the time I was 40. So there you go. And I, um, college went to Clarion for communication, uh, Dave 
you found me, I guess it would have been. Yeah, you found me, and then we linked up, and uh, the rest is history. There you uh, go. Pierre Devate, three-hour podcast on Friday with Washington Beat Writer. Friday podcast could be legendary. Take my money, Dave and Alex. Yeah, we may push three hours uh, with how this thing's going. Boy, we're going to be so worn out trying to get the turnaround done now. Uh, you know, it, was, it was already going to be tough, uh, you know, ha- having the game Thursday and then, then Sunday. And then now, obviously, you know, with, with the game Wednesday, uh, oh, we uh, put your non-sleeping shoes on. <laughs> Uh, OBM, what do you think about the games being postponed with no Ravens players being fined? I mean, the Ravens will get penalized, not individually, but, you know, the organization will get fined and probably loss of draft picks. So we'll see what the punishments are and go from there. Haters MD, hello, Alex and Dave. The saga continues. It does. Would you rather see it played on Tuesday or yesterday? Do you feel this latest move is strictly to accommodate Baltimore or is it safety related? Great work. NFL will say it's safety related, but uh, I, I think this game should be played Tuesday. The outbreak in Baltimore has stopped. That's been pretty you know, clear cut based on no positive test results today. Uh, they should be playing tomorrow, but the uh, NFL is uh, following the uh, Ravens request. I, yeah, I, I would expect more to come out about about what all transpired today. You know, uh, I would like to learn more. I would like to hear quotes from players about kind of, you know, uh, threatening a wildcat strike, if you will. Uh, why wouldn't they go on record with such, right? Yeah. Well, even if they you wanted know? to strike, then they strike. Then you know, the NFL does not get to be dictated to. You right. Know? I mean, there were there was obviously uh, look the the the. The league, they know they got the league in a situation here. The league, the league has too much money to lose to not kind of cower down to a, a, a request. Now, uh, up until today, you know, it, it was easy to follow along maybe with the with the uh, the, the 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 well wellness and the safe uh, being. Now, look, you can you can sort of people ain't gonna like this. You can sort of make an argument. I mean, I you know they, they haven't been able to practice the conditioning. They're worried about. Their claim, their claim is that they're worried about their own health standpoint from not being able to physically practice mm-hmm. uh, these 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 last several days, right? You know, right. Uh, and that that would would be the crux of their argument in this is that oh, there goes player safety. You want us to show up in a stadium now, warm up ninety minutes before game time, and go after not having any on the field practices uh, since. God knows when, you know, they've done walkthroughs and all like that. So if there's any bit of argument on their side that makes sense, it's that because obviously the league did shut them down. Right. And then the league told Mm -hmm. them to go home. However, however quick in, 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 into this afternoon, you know, uh, pretty early. uh, I think they basically uh, got uh, there. Then we're told to go home. So if they have any stretch of an argument, I know people are not liking to hear this, but it's my job to kind of present, you know, to look at both sides. It would be the fact that they, have not had any practices and that players are taking issue with that aspect of, of, of the safety issue. So now that all of you are throwing tomatoes at your, <laughs> at your uh, YouTube machine. Yeah. I don't think that's going to go over all in the chat, but I, but I hear what you're saying. I don't know. If, I, I don't know. It's just frustrating overall. Um, Low Ramy 45. Will I win my game because I need 30 points and have Metcalf and Sanders left? Eh, I don't like your odds there, depending on how your league is structured. I don't like your odds of winning this week. Low Ramy. Uh, Chris, uh, Chris H. Do you know if Lamar Jackson can come back in time versus the Cowboys? Besides pushing this game back to get the running backs back, it may also help Jackson only miss one game. I don't know about Dallas potentially, but I don't know. But he will not play against Pittsburgh. Uh, DJ Yag, are the Steelers scared of this Washington defense? Scared? No, but Washington I think has one of the more underrated defenses in football. So. I, I think they're probably one of the most uh, underrated teams. Obviously, uh, uh, one of the most in, probably in that division right now, and mm-hmm. uh, you know, in, in, in the NFC East. And then, look, I, I, I there was a lot of things they put down on tape, and yeah, it was against Dallas. But I mean, I'll watch that game, and uh, I think they're a better team with Alex Smith at quarterback than than any quarterback they've had on, mm-hmm. under center this year. And you and I are both scary Terry fans. I think the running back back they, they got back there is doing a tremendous job, and uh, they seem to be able to get after the quarterback a little bit as well too. And all, those are kind of all the things that that mm-hmm. that that make you competitive. If, if they stay healthy, it's probably going to be a decent game. 
Yeah, I think so. Joseph Anderson, great work on reporting. Thank you, Joseph. Uh, the last style bender, their front seven is nasty, and Kerrigan is on the bench, so stacked. Yeah, it's a good front overall. Chris W. says, I've got a feeling Pittsburgh go into the Super Bowl. Uh, let's hope so, Chris. Um, Jeremy Coakley, where do you rank the 2020 teams versus Ben's 06 and 09 Super Bowl winning teams? Let's let the season play out, Jeremy, and then we can kind of probably better rank it because how they finish this year probably really – it's going to be a good gauge for where you want to rank this group. Um, I mean, the old five team, they, uh, they, they, they had to get in by the skin of their teeth, right? right. Yeah. You six, know? six seed wild card team. You know, nine and seven then, that year, right? Nine and seven. They went, uh, I think so. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. 10 and six. Anyway, six seed. Yeah. Had them on the table. Uh, Jason Apricot, keep up the great work. Thank you, Jason. Ten more minutes, Dave and I, so be sure to ask your questions here before we end today's stream. Hey, they, uh, t- uh, 2005 season, they won 11-5. and five. Okay. Well, right? but but the 60. But they were wild card, right. Right, okay. Um, well, either way, yeah. I mean, that was just, you know, unprecedented they, odds. They were, the, they were the sixth team. They were the sixth-seeded team at 11-5. and five. Mm. I, I don't. I, I was thinking they were worse than that for some reason because they went on that big losing streak and kind of rattled off a couple of wins. What beat the Bears, the Lions, and the season? The Bengals won the division at eleven and five uh, record as well too. They had okay. the tiebreakers and all. Gotcha. Um, I just had something and I just lost where uh, where I was looking at here. Uh, the last style pender joke jokes. It's a trap game. All these games are trap games for sure. Uh, also, by the way, we will what, not be doing the live stream next Monday, considering the game will be occurring during next Monday at 7 <laughs> o'clock. So just a heads up there, no live stream uh, next week. It, it not looking looking like it. Uh, Mike Adesso, I predict the NFL punishment to Ravens should not be awarding them any comp picks this upcoming draft. Were they scheduled to get any in the first place? I don't know, but that's a, that's an interesting point there, Mike. Uh, Devin Snowden, I don't have a lot of faith in Benny Snell. What choices do we have at running back? Not a ton. It's Snell, it's McFarland, and Smallwood because Connor's out, Jalen Samuels is out, and Dre Edmonds is on IR. Uh, let's see. Jesse Jackson, if the Steelers have to play on Wednesday, why at 340 wouldn't 8 be better? Uh, that's because of the Christmas tree lighting, and NBC does not want it to be a night game. So there you go there. Um... So the Broncos deserve to practice with their receiver at quarterback. That's a fair point. I'm sure Broncos fans are mad. David O, loving the train horn. It is the fire whistle, actually. But uh, all sorts of sounds over here. Um, and can Pitt push the game back for to it by any chance? I don't think so. And I just want this game to be played at this point. I don't even care who's playing in it uh, right now. Uh, the two it test positive this is from Mike Ruiz. We do not know. That is the belief. But again, we do not know. And haters MD says, man, that burns me up. The NFL opined to this request. It just contradicts what happened in Denver. Yes, it's only a one day extension, but still ridiculous. I hear you haters. That has uh, been the most frustrating aspect of things uh, for me. Eduardo Ruiz also says, go Steelers in all caps. Let me scroll back up here because I'm at the bottom of the chat for any other uh, questions, uh, little rambling. We, we answered your question about uh, Metcalf and Sanders. I don't like your odds. Eduardo also says, love your content. Thank you so much. Uh, any other questions or comments that I do want to touch on from earlier in the chat? Um, I can't find anything right now. Dave, any other final thoughts about the, the Ravens game? Uh, no, just, uh, stay tuned because there, there's obviously, we, we think a few more transactions coming on the Steelers side and, you know, we'll, we're going to be watching like the rest of everybody and, and seeing, uh, how many of these guys, the, uh, the, the Ravens get off of the list here. So, uh, uh, that that's the biggest thing I think we look forward to now is, uh, in addition to making sure this game goes off now on Wednesday is who's going to be playing in it. Once again, I, you know, I, outside of, uh, bugs who got activated, uh, today and, 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 uh, Kevin Dotson, who has the roster exemption, those two guys coming off. We don't think I, the only other one I would think uh, uh, with a maybe a chance of being a close contact guy would be Hawkins, I would think. Mm-hmm. Uh, but once again, the team does not 
you know, obviously, I, I think a lot of this has to do with maybe HIPAA or whatnot, but the team's never going to, uh, at least the Steelers are not going to confirm or deny uh, a positive test on a player like that. They, you know, sure, it was easy to figure out with Vance McDonald and Mike Tomlin said as much without, he 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 confirmed without confirming. Mm-hmm. And then obviously you had the media reports on James Conner and all, but those are media reports. No Nobody from the Steelers or James Conner have come out and said, I tested positive on this. So, right. you know, with not having an official uh, transparency from, from, from the NFL and a timeline on this, and you know, being a first year kind of cover this, covering this, 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 this kind of thing, we there's a lot of guessing that goes on on this. So we'll we'll see when it comes to you know, especially players on the Raven side. Got more questions coming in. Also a super chat from Eduardo Ruiz, ninety nine cents. Thank you so much. That is very kind of you uh, to to donate there, Eduardo. Uh, zone or man versus Chiefs. This is from Jonathan Mason. Zone man against Mahomes is not proved effective for really any defense. And Pierre, you're gonna have to play some man, though. I mean, oh, sure. It's not like you're, you know, you're not like you're gonna, but you know, the predominant probably needs to be zone. Yeah. Uh, you get in third down situations, you know, depending on down and distance, then may, maybe you look at, uh, maybe you look at some instances in there. But uh, yeah, uh, you, you don't want to turn your back on Mahomes, you know, because right. that that guy take off and run with the football. Problem for Pittsburgh is they're a better man team than a zone team, and that is uh, mm-hmm. the challenge, unfortunately. Pierre Devate on my bucket list to meet you, Alex, at training camp whenever COVID is over. Missed meeting you in 2018. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I just can't wait to get back out to, tr- out to training camp. Hopefully I can do that for 2021. We'll see. I guess there's no guarantee, but that is certainly my goal. So if you're there, then we can certainly uh, say hello. Mike Adesso, so I think what's confusing is a Steelers Twitter actually tweeted out that Connor, Canada, and Smith were positive, but only mentioned two at Hawkins and Bugs were on the COVID list. Did the Steelers announced that they were positive? I don't think they did. No, uh, they, uh, I, uh, I know with I'll, Canada and Smith, they said they will not coach because of an illness, but they did not right. technically say COVID positive, but I'll I guess that is the implication. It. Yeah. I don't think, I mean, I don't know if something in the write up about Connor that he tested positive. I, I don't believe they said that. I guess you could infer that more with Smith and Canada. Uh, the well, official link. The official link says Steelers place Connor on reserve COVID list. Okay. Uh, at no point does it say that he tested positive. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, now, the, now obviously the outs, the other, the media people, uh, you know, uh, uh, Brooke Pryor, I think, uh, one of them, Aditi uh, was the, the Connor story. or Aditi said she, uh, can you know confirmed it, but the uh, the. The team is not going to confirm it to any of those people. Mm -hmm. Axel Martin, who's a starting running back, it will be Benny Snell. Mark Leslie says, what's one game you suggest I go back and watch tomorrow on Game Pass? Could be the uh, Chiefs-Bucks game, a couple minutes of the Broncos game to watch Hinton and just kind of what happened there, considering how unusual it was. And Paul Scherf says... How can we turn this into a funny end zone celebration? That's a good one. Hopefully Juju's working on it right now. Uh, Tyler Giacomo says, odd Steelers Ravens just turns into Thursday night football at this point. Hopefully no more postponements because I don't really think you could postpone it any any extra days. I mean, you're already into week th- <laughs> by, by, by playing on 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 uh, on Wednesday. You're well into, you know, week. 12 mm-hmm. you know, or week 13. I'm sorry uh, of, of the season there. I mean, it's unprecedented uh, game on Wednesday, right? Yeah. Yeah. Again, first time there's only, well, there was a game in 2012 to open. I think 2012, the Cowboys and Giants played on a Wednesday, something about Obama's DNC speech and they moved the game, but that's been the only other game played on a Wednesday since like 1948, I believe. And that started the season. That, right. that one in 2012 right right it was the first game of the year so it was kind of an unusual situation in the first place instead of a thursday night game i guess they just did a wednesday night game to begin the season uh, a couple more questions from chris any thoughts on how many days steals will practice going into the washington game that's a good question um man i don't even know i mean you would have thursday coming for treatment maybe practice friday they, they saturday wouldn't do much on friday anyway yeah. friday would be uh 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 I mean, look, you would do Saturday would uh, Saturday would probably be the day that you practice. Probably one day of, of, of real practice for the mm-hmm. team would be on Saturday because they would do a walkthrough probably on Sunday. Right. And then uh, the game, uh, obviously, hopefully on, on Monday there. So how much would they do on Saturday uh, on a short week? <laughs> 
I had not a lot because they're just trying to rest up and get ready for this game. Right. Um, it's Mike also asked Tomlin Thursday or Friday. I don't even know when the Tomlin pressure is going to be. Probably on Friday, I guess. Uh, yeah, it would be after. the day after the game. Uh, uh, the the Tomlin Tomlin will speak after the game on Wednesday, obviously. Right. Uh, his his press conference. He'll have he'll probably have one Thursday morning as well too. Okay. There you go. I, I would guess. Yeah, Thursday or Friday, but probably a short week, probably Thursday. Um, Ty Britt, 1829. Last question here. Percentage of snaps for Snell versus McFarland. Um, I'll say 75, I would think. Yeah, I was thinking 70, 30. Probably my guess. Somewhere around there is my guess. We'll see. All right, guys, that will do it for today's live stream. As always, thank you for being here. Again, no live stream next Monday because obviously that is now the Steelers-Washington game. So the next one will probably be two weeks from now or maybe we'll try something later in the week. I'm not quite sure, but we'll, of course, on this channel be recapping all these games and previewing them and doing film breakdowns and all those kinds of things as well. So thank you guys for being here in the chat. So many people donating Super Chats and uh, really appreciate that. Thank you guys for asking questions. And Dave Bryan, as always, thank you for being here with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stay safe, everyone. Peace and love. Thank you for uh, for tuning in tonight. Yeah, stay safe, guys. Enjoy the games, and we will talk to you soon.